Right, hello everybody. Um, so I am going to talk this very, very long-winded title. It was a bit put together on, on last minute, but so testing HTTP client dependencies with Just Eat HTTP client interception library. Now that's a bit of a mouthful. We'll get into it. So if we go to the next slide. So who am I? So I, I, I've been in .NET, I've been coming to .NET for a long time. My name's Adam Storr. Um, I've been, I blog at my adamstore.co.uk, although to Dan's dismay, it still redirects to my Azure website's um, domain. Um, I can be contacted on, on Twitter at West Disc Golf. I'm keeping with the self-promotion, I am currently trying to blog every Tuesday for the year. I am up to yesterday. So, uh, and yesterday's was uh, easily create and manipulate mock anonymous data for unit tests. So go and check it out. Subscribe and all that good stuff that you do nowadays, kids. So, what am I going to talk about? So, what is the Just Eat HTTP client interception library? So, for people outside of the UK, because I, I don't know if it is global, it might be global. It is global. Stuart's nodding. It's global. So, ju Just Eat is a is a concept that's now global. It's the the old. I want some takeaway. I'll log into the app. I'll order some food. And at some point in the next probably 20 to 90 minutes, somebody will rock up on a bike, moped, scooter, car with some food and, and happy days. Um, as part of that, they, they, my understanding is that obviously it's very distributed, microservices, all the good stuff. And this library came about to help to test their, their services and their communication. So what it does is the library creates the ability to configure stock responses for HTTP endpoints and requests. Um, and, and that allows for, for testing, as Dan just talked about, testing pipelines from, from, end, from end to end, but also your, your services that rely on HTTP clients and, and things like that. It allows to to, to resolve to having to spin up a, a, a mock HTTP client yourself and all the, all, the, all the kind of stuff that goes with it to, to make the effort to, to do it to your testing. So let's move on to the thing. So how do we get started? So like all good things, it is a NuGet package. You can go and browse to NuGet.org and look it up and then add it in on the CLI, for the .NET CLI to, to, to reference it in your test project. So as Dan was doing just now, create a new X, X unit test project, other test units are available, and then add, add the reference to get started. Once you've got started and you've, and you've, you've put the, the scaffolding around to create a test, you then have to start constructing what requests you want to work with. And this is where the HTTP request interception builder comes in. So to build up the, the requests that you want to mock, it uses the builder pattern as described here. And the way it works is what you're doing is you're adding different items to be able to add to the matchings that you want to, to um, respond to when you make your request in your actual service. So in this builder, we've got a, we've, we've set it up for the host of api.github.com. We said, for, I want to match on the explicit path for users at users slash West is golf. I only want it to respond to HTTPS and I want it to be the HTTP method of a GET verb. Those are the, the kind of limited numbers. There are other options that you have and the request to headers and things like that. But that's, the, that's the, the first kind of matching items that you want to do. If you make that request, I want the, the, build, the, the interception library to return me the JSON content of that anonymous type. That's what it does. That's at the basic level of it. Once you've created a builder and you can have multiple builders, you don't have to have one, one per test, you can have mul multiple responses. Um, you then want to register that builder with the kind of top level HTTP client interceptor options class. And this is where it, it links everything together, stores all the builders, loads in the bundles, I'll explain bundles in a minute, um, and kind of groups it all together to get ready to, to, to be processed. Once you've got that constructed, you then want to say, give me a configured HTTP client. This will return a bog standard uh, .NET HTTP client instance configured to return those stock responses. 
So nothing clever, nothing, nothing magic. It is, a, it is a stock HTTP client that gets responded. So using that, as Dan's just shown, we can now say, well, actually, we just want to get the string of the request that we've just specified we want to match on. So as we saw before, HTTPS, that's what we, what we clarified for. The host is api.github.com, which is what we specified as the host. And user slash West is golf is the, is the path that we specified. Now, if you went to that, that you, the whole URI to, to mine, you will get to my GitHub repository. Um, profile, whereas we're just saying, actually, this client, just get me the stream of it. And that's what we want. Because it's matched, the response for this request will be that JSON payload of the anonymous type that we've just set up. And as we can see, this is a, this is a screenshot of, a, of a, a unit test that I wrote. And as you can see, in the arrange phase, it's got the, the builder that we've just run through. It's got the options registration with that builder and the creation of the client. And then when, we, when we've actually made the request, you can see in the debug um, tooltip of the payload that has been returned. So this is a very simple setup and, and how it works, but it's just the beginning. This is, this is, this is where we start using Git to plumb into our own stuff and, and furthermore into integration tests as we'll, we'll go for, forward. So how do we use it on our own classes? So as you can see, same setup as before, builder, options, client, not going to dwell on this too long. But then we can use it to test our own strongly typed clients. So when I say strongly typed clients, I mean when you're in your ASP.NET Core, .NET 5, 6 proof profiles, and you've registered your, your services and you've gone add HTTP client and you've put your strongly typed client in there. Um, the My Simple GitHub client in this example is, is literally one of those things. It's a, it's a class that takes dependency on a HTTP, cl t yeah, HTTP client. Um, and then under the hood works at that level of, of abstraction, HTTP request messages, responses, et cetera. So all I wanted to do in this simple test is say, actually, spin me up a, a system under test or, or SUT of my simple GitHub client, um, make the request, which is get user async. At this point, this, this, the client still doesn't know that it, under the hood it's HTTP or what it's responding. So I'm, I'm asking for my, my profile, West is Golf, and the result will be serialized into a, a strongly typed POCO object. And this is just what the assert is checking that the name is out of store. So this allows, as you can start building up the complexity, you can still, you can see where these start, things start coming to end to end and, and able to test things. The real power comes when it comes to end to end integration testing. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube later, go and check out Dan's video on uh, integration testing. Um, this, I'm not covering integration testing explicitly in here, so check that video out. But the default kind of end-to-end -end integration test will be there's a web API action that calls into some business logic that may, may get injected with your strongly typed client. And that will have been configured with various delegating handlers, so to make sure certain um, headers have been added on the way out or configuration settings, etc. And then you'll want to talk to a third party endpoint. So when I was when I was setting this up, it, it was, as you can tell by the client name, it was talking to the, the GitHub endpoints. Um, and the, the certain requirements to be able to access the GitHub APIs, such as um, accept header. And there's, I mean, there's two, there's two you have to set, I can't remember off the top of my head what they are, but you have to set two, so it knows who you are. So if, if we take that away, what have we got? We've got it going into an empty space and nothing can return. So we don't have the ability to add a network connection that we might be working offline or dare I say it, on a plane. Um, but the, there's the, you can't talk to that third party endpoint. So, so what do you do for the integration testing? Well, what you, what you need to do is kind of, is derive from the web application factory, which Dan just alluded to, create a custom, to create a custom one. Once you've created one of these, there you add what we've just seen earlier on the, the HTTP client interceptor options property on that class. At that point, you can then start adding registrations and things during your tests to then be executed at, at, at runtime. What that, what that can then do is add in a IHTTP message handler builder filter, which essentially adds in a delegating handler at the end of your pipeline. 
Um, this is this is all in an example on, on the GitHub repo. So I recommend going to get it, get it down, take a look, and it will show you exactly how this works. But you, you, you register that as part of the service collection and then it gets resolved. So what happens is you end up with the just eat it, uh, client inception library being as, as like a short circuit to just return stock responses. And those responses are matched on the requests that you, you put out. And these matches can get quite targeted with regards to, they have to make sure they have a certain header value, they, the, the right host, the right request level, the, the right value on the query string, the, um, and, and various, various things like that. And it can get kind of complicated if you've got a lot of things going on. So, why would you want to do this? Well, like I said before, if you're on a plane, if anybody's doing that, um, or if you had certain things like um, you, you've, you, you're writing a new end, you're writing some functionality and you're writing a new, uh, to talk to an endpoint, um, the third party hasn't built it yet, but they've published you a Swagger definition file. So there's a, it should be these URIs, this request headers, um, and this payload, sample head payloads. You can then convert those into your stock responses and then start writing integration tests. So you can so, so you can mimic the responses that you, you, you're wanting from the, the third party, even though their, their endpoint doesn't even exist yet. And that allows you to, to not get help, stop, it doesn't, it allows you to not be held up by their development. And then hopefully by the end, it all comes together and it might just work. Possibly, most likely with a few tweaks, but at least you haven't got to wait for the for natural endpoints to be to be available. So this kind of just hides away the, the third party um, API. So as each test, you can have add in a number of these items, and you you register it all at once, and they get matched up. You can specify that you have to have something registered to to be hit. So if, for instance, you you run your integration test somebody's added an additional call that isn't part of your configuration, it, it can blow up, which is a good way of catching that something has changed and you need to address that, whether it's right, wrong, do I need to add something into my, my configuration? It, it helps to kind of um, catch that. So as we're getting on, I'll start to, to wrap up. So in the library, there are other, other concepts um, and I alluded to, to one of them earlier. So the concept of bundle files. So how I've shown you so far are how to set up the, the matches for um, in code you, through through a kind of builder fluent API site type setup. And that's great for, 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 for any of the HTTP verbs. But the bundle files allow you to add in uh, get responses. So if you've, you've, you've run it through your system talking to the real life um, endpoints and you've got the request responses in in your log files, you can use those to create a bundle file of, of request responses that you're expecting for that test and to aid you to construct this. Now, the limitation is that it's only on GET requests, as far as I can tell, mainly because how would you test if it's a post um, it, for, for, and, and other, other verbs? The, it's, there's a limitation on what types you can return. So you can only return string types, obviously JSON, because it's a string. Um, encoded strings um, and obviously can't return things like streams, which you then use the, the strongly typed code version for. Um, but the bundle files are really powerful because it allows you to, to interact with, with a lot of data and it keeps your test setup relatively clean because you essentially say, load this file, register it and, it, and, the, and the library does the rest. The other powerful things are templating. And now this is a thing that I don't use very often. Um, it's not something that I've, I've, I've investigated too much, but this allows essentially to have a stock registration that you can swap things out at, at a per test point. And it allows you to, to extend certain, certain things during, thing, um, during runtime of, the, of, your, of your tests. The, these do work in collaboration with the bundle files. So it might be a case of you have one bundle file for a suite of tests that you tweak Certain, certain values in, to be templated in, um, to be swapped out if for each of the tests. And then you, can, then you can get some more advanced things with regards to matches. Um, like I said before, various headers, header values, do they exist? Does, does the right value of the header exist? Um, if you wanna check that obviously 
whether they've sent in a, a bearer token correctly or an authorization header and things like that. So there's there's things you can check and and compare to 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 spin things around and return stock responses. So that's that's it in a nutshell. I, I've literally just scratched the surface of explaining what it is. I'd highly recommend you going to have a look for it. Um, so as you can see on the on the screen, you can see the um, GitHub repo. And is there the the launch kind of blog post to explains a lot more about it is on the, the Just Eat Takeaway tech blog site. Um, I'd highly recommend it. And uh, thank you very much. So if you have any questions, let me know. Or if you if you want to shout out to to Stuart, who's in the audience somewhere, who's one of the contributors, then also let me know.